So now we're at the console of our Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 5.5 box. We're on Control Alt F1 or Teletype Terminal number one. Let's log in as user root. And confirm our presence using the TTY command. Excellent, we're on TTY1. Super. So now we want to upgrade the system. The thing to do is to reboot. The CD's already in. That's the boot CD that we've downloaded from the Red Hat Enterprise download repository online. And once we reboot, it will boot because our BIOS is set to boot from the CD-ROM first using that CD, which will provide us with the grub bootloader with options for booting the existing system, recovering the system, or booting a new installation. So let's go ahead and issue the reboot command, which is basically an init 6. This will terminate services. Now here's our BIOS. Let's enter the setup using F2. This will allow us to confirm that the system clock is set to UTC time with respect to the Enterprise 6 installation, which will invariably ask us whether or not the system clock is set to UTC so that it can offset it accordingly. And that's the suggested thing for you to do to set your system clock to UTC time for proper daylight savings adjustments by your operating system. Notice above F12 for Pixie Boot. This allows us to boot from the wire if necessary. And after all the initialization of the storage backend controller, we're in the BIOS. Now, it is set to UTC time, 1533. The current local time is just about five hours prior. So this is UTC time. It's off by a few minutes. We can always modify it by pressing enter and navigating to the appropriate field. It's about 1542 GMT or UTC. The date is correct, and the system memory is relegated to 512. It's not limited for the OS install mode, but physically limited with only 512 megs of memory. The boot sequence, let's navigate, is set to use the CD-ROM first. This first slot here would be for a Pixie boot if it were checked, but it's not checked. And you can move things up and down by using plus or minus. CD-ROM first, hard drive second, and Pixie boot third if appropriate. So with that said, the BIOS looks fine, and we can escape the save changes and boot from the CD-ROM. So now the BIOS is firing back up. The storage adapter will initialize. The embedded server management will also initialize. And this at this stage is an older PowerEdge server, but its processors are still rather nifty. The bus speed is slow, but the processors are still fast. Hard drives are initialized, 336 gig drives. And now we're booting from CD-ROM. So, this is for version 6. Now, to modify this grub menu, you press tab. First, you highlight the option that makes sense, and then you press tab. You may install or upgrade the system. You may install with a basic video driver. That's the VESA setting. You may rescue and install system, or you may boot from the local drive. This last option, which is present in other distributions, will allow you to boot any existing bootloaders that are present on the primary hard drive on your system. So for example, it provides you an out in the event that you need to boot the existing operating system. So these are your four options. To make changes, as we've mentioned, to the boot menu option, press tab, and this reveals the string. So VMLinux, the Linux kernel, will 
load with an initial RAM disk of initRD image, and we'll tack on our settings using Linux repository set to what we've mentioned, 192, 168, 75, 101 slash Linux CBT, and it is case insensitive since it's Apache server. Contents are stored beneath the top level EL6 directory, miscellaneous, rel6. So this is where the sources will be located during installation by Anaconda. If we neglect to specify this repo option, then Anaconda will prompt us at some point to supply the installation sources either via local media such as CD, DVD, or via the network via NFS, FTP, or HTTP. So it saves us some time by specifying it now. Now graphical installation doesn't work but we're still going to go ahead and specify the resolution in the event, the odd event that it happens to pop up. We want to control the resolution with which the installer is displayed to 800 by 600. We also want to set the IP address to a fixed address since the server has a fixed address on the network. Let's also set its net mask to 24 bits and its gateway to the default router on the wire. Let's also set DNS in the event that it's necessary during installation since we do have access to a shell during installation. So these are the settings that we'd like to pass to Anaconda to the kernel that will be used for installation. There are a number of other settings as we've mentioned just consult the Red Hat documentation and check online since the Linux kernel supports myriad options during booting. So let's go ahead and fire this off and we did so by simply pressing enter. VMLIN is the kernel for installer initial RAM disk with drivers to detect and support the connected hardware are being loaded. That's what all those dots mean. And now notice we're in a text-based installer. If you notice quickly, before the screen switched from the black screen to this screen, it read that there was not enough memory to support the graphical installation. As is traditional with Red Hat Linux, the option to test the media before proceeding with installation is made available. This is to avoid any possible ramifications of corruption at a later stage in the installation, such as the inability to copy RPMs from the CD or DVD to the hard drive resulting in a broken installation perhaps one that doesn't boot. If you are confident that your media are in this case it is its one disk proper and error free then skip the media check and move on. So this will take us to the next phase of installation. Network Manager is configuring ETH0 and notice the install image was retrieved. That means the network settings we pass worked. And if you notice again briefly, you do not have enough memory. So welcome to Red Hat Enterprise Linux text-based installation because not enough memory was detected to support a graphical installation. So let's go ahead and press OK and indicate standard settings such as the language that we'd like to use the keyboard and now it's scanning for connected storage devices and as we've mentioned our system clock uses UTC but our offset is minus 5 or GMT minus 5 so the offset is correct America New York system clock uses UTC. If your system clock does not use UTC, which means it uses local time, then deselect system clock uses UTC so that the operating system does not switch your time to a wrong time when it's up and running. Time configuration takes place during the initialization of the operating system and it's important that the option system clock uses UTC is properly set. Now this can be changed of course when the system's up and running but it helps if you get your time settings correct prior to installation so that all of your file stamps and everything are appropriate. Let's go ahead and specify a password for the root user. This is a required step and can be scripted of course using kickstart. 
and the navigation in the text interface is conducted using a combination of tab and enter. So tab to move between the fields and enter to commit changes. So as we can see, it sees that there's an existing Linux system. It also sees multiple hard drives. So we have some options here. We can use entire drive, we can replace the existing system, we can use free space. There is no free space on the first drive, so that would not be an option. The second drive, SDB, has free space, which could be used. SDC also has space. But